Welcome back. Today we got a sort of electronics unboxing test whatever project. Uh, I bought myself one of these uh, fancy electric spark plugs from China. <laughs> it's supposed to be a 68 amp hours battery. What they don't say is what voltage these 68 amp hours related to. It's not very heavy. I would say it's probably about 200 grams, maybe 250. Need to check it, I don't know. Maybe wrong. Uh, and it comes with some jump start leads as well. So what we're gonna do is um, we use one of these kilowatt hour meters and hook that up and discharge it and then we'll see it's fully charged i charged it uh, pretty much all day and uh, i think we take it apart before you got four usb outputs you got uh, 16 oh, i need my glasses it's got 15 16 and 19 volt charger for laptops comes with a wall charger, actually a British one, which is good. Most of them come with a European one. That's the charger where you can charge the unit with the, from the car because that's the charging port. Um, it comes with a bunch of mobile phone adapters. So you should be able to charge your phone and that's the laptop adapter with a bunch of adapters. The whole thing was about 30 pounds, which is uh, $40 or so. But our key interest is this thing here. So apparently, the reason why I call it spark plug is because it's a lithium polymer battery uh, and they have the habit of burning sometimes. So looking at the wires, it says you could draw 600 amps for a few seconds and 300 amps for a while. Um, but looking at the wires, I wouldn't do that for long. But yeah, apparently it's okay for jump starting a medium sized car. So I was thinking about using one of these in my motorbikes. It's got a power switch, it says fully charged. And uh, you can switch on different voltages for your laptop charger. If you hold it longer, you've got a flashlight, which is pretty bright. Um, obviously you've got USB outputs. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same as the small ones you use for charging your phones. So let's see if we have 12 volts here. Or whatever the idle voltage is. This is a pretty well calibrated voltmeter. And we are reading 12.5 volts. Which is okay. Uh, I'm not going to discharge it right now, I'd rather take it apart and have a look inside. Uh, let's turn that off and pull that plug. It's, yeah, it's, the design is not bad actually. Apparently it's got a hazard flasher as well, somehow. Um, I guess we need to pop off this clump here and then it may come apart and this voids my warranty but do I care? No, I don't. Let's see from the bottom. Yeah. It's plastic as well, so it's not metal. I mean, it looks like it's chrome plastic. So let's see. There is a chance that this is actually ultrasonic welded together, so we might not be able to take it apart. Let's see. They might do that because they don't want you to take it apart. 
Let me figure out how it comes apart and then we'll come back. Well, we managed to tear it apart. Uh, it is simple if you know how. There is two plastic prongs here and there are screws underneath uh, in these holes. And that's screwing into this one here. So what we got here is some electronics, which is doing the 5 volts and probably the charging and whatever. Uh, what we got here? A few switching regulators and bits and bobs. Nothing spectacular. Uh, three powerful LEDs. We got two LiPos. Uh, with some cardboard spaces. It doesn't say anything on this battery, it just says 2017 07, so that's the manufacturing date. They just heat shrink together. Uh, it looks like unfused. I think the fuse is in this one here. Let's see if we can get that electronics out here. I don't want to destroy it because. I obviously want to use it, so yeah, there's no point of taking that out. But at least it's it's uh, you can take it apart. There's not much in it. I doubt if this thing got 68 amp hours. We'll see. Let's put it back together. We've seen what's inside. There is at least a battery inside, and uh, let's let's do a discharge and see how it holds. Again, it's, it's, it's supposed to be full. I, yeah, and honestly, I don't want to mess around with this thing, it's full. There's just so much energy in it. Um, yeah, so let's just put it back together. And uh, if we get it together. It's a bit tricky with that uh, blue thing, it's some silicon, with that big connector. But uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward actually. It wasn't glued, which happens quite often with these things. They are glued together and then you can't take it apart. So, But uh, we're lucky. Let me put it back together and uh, set it up for the discharge test and then we'll see how far we get here. So we're drawing current. Um, Interestingly, it dropped down to 12 volts straight away. Don't know if it's visible, hopefully, hopefully there's not so much glare. We're drawing about 22 watts. This is a 25 watt resistor here. Just put it on a little anvil to get rid of the heat. Um, and uh, we just discharge it for a while until we see some watt hours. The total energy stored in that battery should be around about 680 watt hours. I don't believe it's that much. We'll see. Normally this charge would be 10% of the capacity, which is 6 amps or 7 amps. Um, I'll probably hook up some more resistors and uh, see what it does. when. It doesn't matter if we lose something here in the wiring because that's all measured here. We got thicker wires here. Let me get some more resistors. Pump that up to about four amps or so. So we're down to eleven half volts now and um, drawing about three amps. Power is thirty five watts, and I wonder what the voltage is doing if you're drawing three hundred amps. Apparently, nothing is getting warm here. I'm a bit concerned with the. With the performance here and we only drawn about three watt hours from 700 it still says full charge important thing is that there is no fuse even the thing is turned off this is always under power that's probably a reason for that rubber cover um, and uh, so handle with extreme care because if you short that thing the battery goes pop or the wire or some other fuse, whatever, something goes. There's just too much energy in it. I'm I'm not convinced because we're down at 11.3 now and we only drawn about 3 watt hours. 
Don't know if that's visible. So we hooked up a, a power drill, just removed the battery and uh, um, run it. So this thing draws about 6 amp, 5 amp, 50 watts. That's 12 amps and then my fingers getting warm. Uh, Uh, 22 amps, that's what I can draw with these little wires here. Uh, it seems to be alright. Uh, it's, uh, it's just that the, we're down at 10.7 now. And the 18 watts is still a resistor. I just want to draw energy out of that thing. Yeah. I don't know what the nominal voltage is of that battery. I turn I dimmed the light a bit. Hopefully it's better visible. I don't know if the display is visible. I can't see that on the camera display. It's so small. Um but reading 10.7 volts at uh, at 9 watt hours. Yeah, we'll just carry on discharging until we are at a low voltage I need to figure out how uh, what the standard is for these lipo cells because apparently when it was charged it was 12 volts and we're now down to 10.6 I'm not super familiar with li lithium polymer batteries so I need to figure out what the uh, normal discharge voltage is it says here still full Ah, yeah. So now we're getting about half full. I don't know if it's visible. Only two LEDs there. So we actually drained 10 watt hours and the thing says half full. I don't buy into this 68 amp hours. Alright, let's drain that a little bit further and uh, come back when we see some numbers here. So we, we had a quick Google and it says the voltage of a discharged LiPo cell is 3 volts and discharging below this will definitely damage the cell. Because the battery shown has a 3S arrangement, it's marked with its nominal voltage of 11.1 volts, 3.7 volts times 3 cells. A fully charged 3S pack is 12.6 volts, that's about what we measured, and a fully discharged pack is 9 volts. That means at 9 volts we're fully discharged. Okay. So at the moment we are at 10.5 and uh, we're not coming near the 9 volts so it's still we still got some energy left but if you look at a discharge curve it should sit at this voltage around 10 volts for a long time um, but we only drain 10 watt hours 12 watt hours so which is a bit disappointing but uh, I don't know at least it's not getting warm so anyway we'll carry on discharging and uh, see what we get out of it well we got 21 watt hours and the thing is blinking. I don't know if it's visible. Here it's blinking. So, and I was hitting sub 9 volts with some load. Got a car headlight here. Are we going below 9 volts? So, either it wasn't full, even if it was showing full. Or this is all bullshit. I need to read the uh, correct charging procedure and uh, 
voltage curve of a LiPo battery. Um, we probably hook up some data logging to see what actually happens at which load uh, because this is disappointing. You would sort of expect it, you know, it's uh, yeah, 21 watt hours and we're almost empty. At least the thing is blinking. So that means it says it's empty. Again, I don't know if it was full. It was sh showing full. Uh, but if you look at the charger, it says one amp. So at 12 volts, one amp. You're going to charge it for two hours for that energy I just drained here. And uh, a little bit of load we're dropping below. That's not nice. Let's double check it with a meter just in case we're reading some fancy numbers here on that meter because the setup is less from perfect. I just hooked it up because I wanted to see it. It turned up today and I just wanted to see what's going on. I'm measuring 8.85 volts. Yeah, that's what I'm measuring here. So it's it's real this thing shows correct voltage anyway we need to unhook that because otherwise we are damaging the battery well what should i say i'll have a quick read what this size of battery's nominal capacity might be there is a good possibility that they did the maths wrong uh, we are at 3% of the expected energy, we're reading 22 watt hours and we want 700. There is losses in this, in this setup here but only from here into the meter because the wires might be a bit thin. On the outside the losses don't matter because it's all measured. So um, any loss here is good. Any loss on the in, on the input is no good, but we check the voltage on the on the clamps here, and it's the same. So we're not losing any voltage here. It's just poor. Okay, let's say first attempt failed. Uh, we're gonna fully charge that thing again at one amp. That's at least 70 hours of charge, which is a bit of a joke. Um, as soon as I as soon as I draw some current and it's not much I'm, uh, I'm down and I'm blinking here so it tells me it's empty I will charge it fully and uh, we'll do it again this was a, a brief quick and dirty setup to see if there's if they're any good uh, so it's not representative uh, we'll do a proper test later on and uh, but I'm not very convinced that this is any better. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed right now. We'll see what comes out when it's fully charged. Well, at the current state, we actually drawn about two amp hours, not 68. That's the reason why I'm so disappointed because it, it showed fully charged. As said before, I'm a bit worried that numbers are maybe a bit optimized. Anyway, that should be enough for this part. We charge the thing up and uh, give it a second try. This was a fail for sure. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.